to uh, share his thoughts on the action of the CBN. Uh, we have uh, Head Retail Investment uh, Management Group, Chapel Hill, Mr. Ayodeji Ebo. Mr. Ebo, thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning, and thanks for having me. Good morning. Great to have you. Well, uh, First Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has been in the news uh, yesterday and today. And the, the CBN noted that it took exception to a situation where a systematically important bank, such as FBN, would uh, reconstitute its board without previous consultations with the regulator. Uh, for you, as an investment analyst, uh, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, thank you. I think the first thing is to allay the fears of the customers that First Bank uh, is saved, that their deposits are saved, and there's really no problem with their funds. And now looking at what the likely the, the implication based on well, the uh, briefing from the CBN governor yesterday. So well, based on uh, what we understand by it from the briefing is that uh, the actually the first bank has been um, been su supported by the CBN and been given some forbearances. And if we recall, we look back looking at the data as of 2016, the non-performing loan was as high as 26%. And when you compare that to the 5% threshold of the CBN, and I think over time, we saw that continued reduction in the non-performing loan, which uh, I think now can be traceable to some of the forbearances that, um, that the CBN granted to the bank. And if we look at for for the for investors and uh, based on the decision the cbn has taken which uh, is to protect the minority shareholders and um, we we'll feel that uh with the new um management or the the intervention uh things would um would normalize and we'll begin to see some traction uh, because if you look at this the, the based on uh, uh, based on what the bank is uh, doing, when you look at the classification as a systemically important bank, um, we also don't expect that the CBN would have also folded its arms and not also intervene when there are issues. We've seen it. This is not going to be the first time. We've seen it also in the past uh, where um, CBN governors step in when they discover that um, they, they, there's a need for them to step in and stabilize the bank because banking is all about confidence. And what um, the CBN is also trying to, if anything happens to First Bank, it's not only First Bank that would suffer for it, it's also going to affect the financial system and affect confidence generally. So it's important that there, that there needs to be that sustained confidence um, in, in the financial, financial system. And looking at what they may likely the reaction for the shareholders, yes, we, we expect some uh, new uh, um, reaction today. We expect that the shares will dip further, but we, we, we know that uh, there's still significant potential for, for, for the bank. When you look at the top line of the bank, it's like the, um, the in terms of revenue, it's always like the highest in, in the industry. But where we know the challenge is, is the cost to income ratio, which is above six, about 60 something percent. So we believe that um, the management um, that has been restored, which used to be old management that has been running, we will see how they can also intensify effort in bringing down the costs. Uh, we expect if the forbearance is, is taken away now, it means that we may likely see an increase in the non-performing loans um, in the interim, but we are sure that that will be restructured and over time um, we will see First bank also bounce back, but the most important thing is to be rest assured that deposits are saved, uh, are saved with the, with, the, with the banks, and there's really no cause for alarm. Okay, so, um, as, well, uh, as you expect, there are a lot of sentiment going on around here. So, some people would like to know, is this CBN's intervention because of the forbearance it is given to First Bank, or is this just a normal thing that could happen to any bank? No, I think it's um, not just uh, because of the forbearance. Um, what, uh, based on the briefing, is that CBN has been supporting the bank in the past since 2016. 
and um, which based on their um, examination, their targeted um, examination, they discovered that um, they need some form of stability that the bank was challenged and they tried to stabilize the bank. That's like almost five years ago. And they tried to stabilize the bank since then. I will recall then they could not even pay um, dividend. So I think from time based on the CBN Act, they also have that, there's that, they have that authority to also intervene when they when when they see that there's a major challenge within the banking system because the major issue it's easier to stabilize and if we notice that um for for for, for what the cbn is also is also trying to do is to ensure that they sustain confidence in the financial system because it's very easy to lose confidence and it's difficult to build it so rather than just leaving the leaving the bank um, alone to um, just leaving the bank and not um, intervening. They have been supporting, we don't know the, uh, whether there have been interventions in terms of also funding in the banks or uh, we're only aware of the forbearance. So it's, it's only maybe proper that if they have been intervening and they've been providing this support all these years, they, have, they will also need to be aware of any changes that may happen within the bank um, uh, before any uh, changes is made. So I think it's in line with um, the CBN Act, and this is not the first time we're seeing that. And it's, uh, it's, it's always just to uh, provide some form of stability within the financial system. OK. All right, all right, Mr. Ebo. Well, the CBN is also concerned that the removal of a sitting MD CEO has dire implications for the bank and also, you know, pertains significant risks to the stability of the financial system. Um, what are the possible risks here? Yes, I think um, if we look at the normal process that when, when a bank MD, when we look at other banks that... Um, or we look at other banks that have also changed their banks um, in recent times, there's always that succession plan that there's at least maybe like six months notice you notify the market and and you also give a, a date that when the new MD will be taking over. So, and because the bank is also regulated, there would also be need to get approval and it's also publicly listed. So the news should even also be sent to the Nigerian Stock Exchange because it can also influence or impact on investors' decision. So I think um, by and large, it's, uh, it's a requirement that you get approval when you are changing as, at, at the senior level to get approval from the CBN even before making any announcement. So I think maybe that's where the, the, the mix up um, um, came from and the CBN had to step in. Okay, so uh, I know you, you've talked about um, uh, investors and shareholders, confidence and all that, but uh, yesterday was a lot of sell-off on CBN holdings. What do you see today from this news, from the shareholders, from the depositors? Uh, yes, I think uh, for, for depositors, and that's why I, I started before going into my analysis, is to... Um, assure them that the deposit are secured. Um, there's no financial problem with the bank. And with the CBN backing, they, that should even give them some rest of mind that their deposit, deposit or their funds are secured. But for when you're looking at it for the traders, for the investors, um, that the equity investors, uh, we would expect that uh, because of a lot of your certainty and some of the new uh, facts that are uh, unfolded, I uh, would expect that there may be some major sell off in the situation. It also presents opportunities also to benefit from this uh, downside. So it's um, this initial shock would expect that um, the share price would, would be today and uh, but it's it's all bank it's it's a strong bank and would also try 
as much as possible with the management. Also, quickly want to make the bank uh, more profitable and more efficient. I'll put it more efficient in terms of reducing the, the cost to income ratio so that um, there's enough uh, for the equity shareholders in terms of dividend. All right, Mr. Ebo, with this uh, development, what's your outlook for the banking sector moving forward? Okay, thanks. Um, very valid question. I feel that uh, if we look at the banks um, over the years, they've always been very resilient. Um, despite challenges, you would see that for a lot of even the banks that have released their first quarter results, uh, you can see the, the top line and bottom line also growing and been very impressive just for few ba banks that recorded the decline. So I believe that there's a lot of potential within the space. We've seen this new trend of banks also moving, uh, going through the holding structure to also be able to take advantage of some opportunities within the financial services space. So we believe that um, there's still, when you look at in terms of financial inclusion, there's still a lot of opportunities. And we know um, and most banks now have realized that um, they have to grow the bank using digital and not opening physical branches. So we will see more shifts to, um, to digitalization, to fintech, and, and that would also help grow and reduce their cost and also improve their, their top line. So I believe that the sector is very resilient uh, we, we, and also with uh, the continuous examination from the CBN, we look at, when you look at the capital adequacy, ad adequacy ratio rather of, of the banks, um, for the systemically important banks that have been put at a threshold of um, 16%, and you compare that to um, even from what uh, other, other claims uh, in terms of the, the requirement, we can see that there's enough buffer for any shock. And we saw the COVID period did not even impact um, on a lot of the banks uh, compared, despite the oil decline we saw last year, when you, when you look at it compared to uh, 2016, which means that the risk management um, system has also been improved upon. And I, I believe that um, there's still a lot of potential for, for the banks, or for Nigerian banks. All right. Uh, well, I'd like to correct that. I think in one of the questions, I did say CBN holding. Obviously, it's not CBN holding. It's FBN holdings, First, Bank of, holding. First yes. Bank of Nigeria holdings. Well, um, uh, as we begin the month of May, Mr. Ebo, what's your outlook uh, in the equities market? Obviously, we'll have uh, the impact of these developments in First Bank and then in the fixed income market. What is your outlook for both markets? Okay, thanks. For the equities market, uh, we still know in view of the rising view in the fixed income market, uh, we were still very cautious for short-term traders. Uh, we still feel that, that they should trade with caution uh, because when you begin to, when you compare, you do a risk return analysis, um, the fixed income market may be a, a place you want to, you want to increase your weightings to, uh, to fixed income compared to the equities market, and that would impact on the performance of the market. Yes, we expect results may be positive, but we would see that um, we are not uh, very bullish on the equities market uh, this year, um, as long as we uh, fixed income yields remain very high. And for fixed income, we still believe that there's still a bit of upside, even when you look at the shorter end of the curve, um, one year t bills at 9.75, we still feel that it may cross, uh, it should be able to cross the, uh, to double digits. And also at the bond, um, uh, they're still, they're, uh, at the bond auction in, in May, would expect that we should begin to see 14% uh, levels or, or more um, within, uh, within the, in the market. So uh, for, for traders, uh, equities market, you, you need to trade with caution, but if you are a long-term investor, this is the time that you need to lock in into stocks that have values and uh, you'll be able to benefit from that in the, in the long term.